the Holy Spirit. Drop that one in the comment below right now. Spam the chat. Stay engaged with me and we're going to start in just a second. Baptism with the Holy Spirit. So in order to understand the teaching and the understand the baptism with the Holy Spirit, we have to start from the beginning. There are different baptisms. For example, we know there's a baptism of Moses. We know there's a baptism of John. We know that there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we know there's a baptism with the Holy Spirit. And then there's water baptism. And then there is a baptism of suffering. On my foundations course, I go into every baptism and they break it down more and more, but which I'm not going to do today, but I'm just going to highlight something right now. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is not the same as the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit baptizes you into Jesus Christ at the day of your salvation and you become the body of Jesus. How do you become the body of Jesus? Well, let me read it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. So we were baptized into Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So the first baptism that as a Christian, you probably have experienced already, if you are a Christian, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit into the body of Jesus. So you became a Christian through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That happened at the day of your salvation when the Holy Spirit planted you into the body of Jesus. When the Holy Spirit immersed you into Jesus, you became one with Christ. Come on, if you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ, if you are one in Christ, if you are part of his body, go ahead and give God some praise right now in the chat. Just drop that emoji. If you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit into Jesus, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 13. So that, that is the first baptism, okay? The second baptism, and that's the one that all of us have experienced, it's called the water baptism. It's very simple. It's the one where a believer or a pastor baptizes you into water. So the first baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit into Christ, happens during salvation. The second baptism is the water baptism. This baptism is into water by another believer or a pastor. And this baptism is a symbol of the first baptism, meaning you are in Christ and now you're publicly declaring of this uh, decision that you have taken for Christ. And now is the third baptism, which we're going to talk about today. Now, I hope I didn't confuse you with the three baptisms. So the first one is baptism of the Holy Spirit. The second one is the water baptism. And the third baptism is baptism with the Holy Spirit. So baptism of the Holy Spirit into Jesus. Baptism of water by another believer. And then baptism with the Holy Spirit by Jesus. So let me read to you this verse. In Matthew 3 verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. John is speaking. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Watch this. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Come on, somebody drop that fire emoji. I already feel it. We're just starting, but I feel the fire already in this room and it's going to come through the stream. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus at the day of our salvation. But at the day of our surrender, Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. This is called baptism with the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus at the day of our salvation. Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit at the time of our surrender and into his fire so these are two different baptisms baptism of the holy spirit baptism with the holy spirit baptism of the holy spirit i'm going to say it again it's what happens at salvation baptism with the holy spirit it's what happens at surrender where jesus 
baptizes you, immerses you into the Holy Spirit. But during your salvation, Holy Spirit immersed you into Christ. So now that we understand the basics of these baptisms, I want to now take a moment and talk about this person of the Holy Spirit whom Jesus baptizes us into and who baptizes us into Jesus. If you're not confused yet, say go deeper or go further. If, if you're still with me, if you're saying, okay, I understand, that's awesome explanation. If you are understanding what I just said so far, go ahead and drop that in the comment below. Say, I'm with you. I understand. Let's go further because I, I don't want to share something that I lose you guys. What is the scripture about Jesus' baptism? Somebody asked. It's Matthew 3, 11. I am so confused. I am a bit confused. Okay, go deeper. I can't find my fire emoji. All right, all right. I understand. Let's go further. Okay, some of you guys will go. Will have to go back and rewatch. So baptism of the Holy Spirit and baptism with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to recap it again. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is 1 Corinthians 12, 13. It's Holy Spirit baptizing us into Christ at the day of our salvation makes us one with Christ. And then as we are saved, Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit and fills us with power. That's when we have the access to his gifts and we have access to his glory. And that's what we call baptism with the Holy Spirit. So this is not just language changes, but this is a total different experience. One is about infilling, the other one is about indwelling, which we're going to talk about in a moment a little bit more. But before we go any further, we just broke 500 people on YouTube. Yay, come on. And so let's go further. Three truths about the Holy Spirit that I want to share with you as we're going to go further before we pray for the baptism with the Holy Spirit for those people that are watching. And our moderators, uh, thank God for every one of them, are dropping the scriptures with us as well. And they are dropping these points as well on our stream. Three truths about the Holy Spirit that I would like you to share. Some of you have never heard about this before. And I, I, I think I've shared it, but, but it's a very, like a very small detail somewhere in the middle of the message. I believe this is going to change your relationship with God and your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So the first truth is the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. Listen to this. Jesus says this concerning the Holy Spirit. He says in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, And being assembled together with them, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, you have heard from me acts 1 4. so look who holy spirit is promise of the father now you have to understand the 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 context you have to understand the background story as well holy spirit is mentioned in genesis chapter 1 verse 2. he hovers over the chaos and then god speaks the word and miracle happens then we see the Holy Spirit second time in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Let me read to you the verse. The Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. His days shall be 120 years. So God is saying in chapter 6, My spirit will not strive with man forever. Now strive this word scholars are debating what this word means i don't know exactly what this word means when i looked in the concordance it says judge plead the cause contend execute strive uphold what god is saying is my spirit is being affected by the evil in this world my spirit who lives on this world is being affected by the crime the hate and guess what the Lord does you would think God will take away his spirit from the earth but you know what God did he cut our life on earth short we started to live on earth 100 120 and now even less on the earth as a result of us mistreating the Holy Spirit do you know why you don't live very long on earth because of our relationship to the Holy Spirit. 
because we are hurting the Holy Spirit through our behavior, our attitude, and our motives. God the Father is so protective of the Holy Spirit that He cut our ears short because the Spirit was so grieved. In fact, when Israel grieved His Spirit, it says in Isaiah 63 verse 9 and 10, in all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bore them and carried them all the days of old but watch this but they rebelled and grieved his holy spirit he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them god the father goes to war on behalf of his spirit against Israel. They grieved his spirit. He turned against them and fought them. In Genesis 6, his spirit was grieved. He removed people from the earth. He didn't take the spirit away. He removed people. In Isaiah, Isaiah gives us prophetic insight that when Israel grieved his spirit, God the Father went to war. This Jesus comes on earth and tells us, Heavenly Father is promising once again the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He protected him, if I could say that. Now, Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is not some innocent... <laughs> and you know very weak holy spirit is strong holy spirit is mighty but god the father protects and he goes to war on behalf of the holy spirit but here in the new testament he promises him and he says i once again promise you the holy spirit that's such a precious promise maybe you have a promise of healing the promise of the holy spirit is greater than that maybe you have a promise of provision which is in the bible promise of protection promise of god's peace promise of god's presence no promise of god i believe is greater than the promise of the holy spirit come on if you're thankful to god for the promise of the holy ghost give god some praise right now just drop that number one in the emoji right now if you are thankful for the father for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit, He's so precious. He's so gentle. He will not fight on His behalf, but the Father goes to war on His behalf. But to us, the New Testament believers, God the Father promises the Holy Spirit again, knowing we can grieve Him, knowing we can quench Him, knowing we can hurt Him. Yet he promises him again to us. That is such a precious promise. That's number truth number one. God the Father promises the Holy Spirit. Truth number two about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the petition of Jesus. So the first truth I said is the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. Truth number two is the Holy Spirit is the petition of Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 16, it says the following, I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. See, just because God promised something, it doesn't mean it's going to come automatically. See, this example teaches us also that all of God's promises, they need to be still activated, if I could say like that, through prayer. You need to pray through the promises of God. Look, God the Father promises the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus, yet Jesus goes to prayer. And He says, I will pray the Father to send you the Holy Spirit. God's promise needs to be activated by prayer. And so this promise of the Holy Spirit is promised by the Father. And Jesus says, I will pray the Father so that make sure that this promise comes true that He will send you another comforter. Now, what I want to highlight something is this, is that even Jesus had to petition the Father 
for the things the Father promised. If God promised you protection, you need to petition the Father for that. If God the Father promised you peace, you need to ask Him for that. If God the Father promised you provision, you need to ask Him for that. Don't just simply say, well, if God promised that He's going to make it happen, I don't need to do anything, I don't need to pray, I don't need to earn it. No, you don't need to earn it, but you need to petition the Father. Come on, somebody, you need to pray for what God has promised you. And look at this prayer of Jesus. As our high priest who went to heaven, to intercede for us who right now is not chilling Jesus is not just you know over there hanging out as just drinking his his coffee and just kind of you know like just kind of really relaxing Jesus is praying Jesus is interceding you know what his prayer first prayer was in heaven father send disciples send believers the Holy Spirit in other words it is Jesus' petition that you will have same relationship with the Holy Spirit His disciples had with Him. Can I say that again? Jesus' prayer is that you will have the same relationship with the Holy Spirit as His disciples had with Him. The scripture says that Jesus he lives forever to make intercession for us. He interceded that we will have same relationship with the Holy Spirit that His disciples had with Him. Have you noticed what His prayer says? Father, send Him, send them another comforter. Send them another. The word another is a word which means one besides another of the same kind so another means one of the same kind one who walks besides there is two greek words for another one is heteros which means another kind this wretch wrench doesn't fit bring me another one the second greek word is alos which means another but it means another of the same kind i enjoyed this sandwich I think I'll have another, meaning you will have another sandwich of the same kind. So there is heteros, which is another of the different kind, and then alos, which is another of the same kind. So if I finished my coffee, let's say, hey, babe, to my wife, could you make me another one? Meaning exactly the same. So Jesus is saying, Father, send them another comforter meaning send them somebody just like me disciples lived with jesus talked with jesus slept with jesus were on the boat with jesus they didn't pray to him yet he was god they fellowshiped with him so jesus goes up to the father and says father send them another one of the same kind so that they can walk with Him, so they can live with Him, so they can be with Him. The word helper there means parakletos. It's broken down into two words, para and kaleo. Para means very close and kaleo means to call, meaning somebody who is called to, to be very close to us. So Jesus in heaven is not asking the Father to just send us tongues and fire and dove and wind. He's asking the Father to send us a person who will walk close with us, who will be near us and who will be with us in the same way Jesus was with His disciples. Can I tell you a shocking truth? The Holy Spirit wants to have the same relationship with you that Jesus had with His disciples. This this changed my world. The Holy Spirit wants to have the same relationship with you that Jesus had with His disciples. You can have the same relationship with the Holy Spirit today that disciples had with Jesus. You can walk with Holy Spirit. He can explain to you the scriptures. He can release you in, on assignments. He can empower you with power. 
man this is awesome he says it is better that I go because if I don't go he won't come so many people they wish for something something more in their spiritual life and they hope that it will come from heaven not realizing what more you need is already on this earth there's this story I shared in my break free book excuse me where one man was coming from Europe to the United States on the ship and then he couldn't afford to have extra uh, money so he could be able to he will be able to pay for um, so that he will be able to pay for all the food on the ship and so what he did what he did is he simply got I see that our internet is glitching a little bit um, is our internet good in the house I uh, sorry one one more second huh Oh, okay and so the internet is we're, we're improving that guys those of you who are still with me on YouTube stay, stay on YouTube we're we're here with you and so this guy what he does is that he buys a ticket to come from United States to from Europe to United States on this ship and during that time you know the the ship's voyage was very long and so instead of you know uh having enough money to buy for food on this ship what he did is he simply bought a big bag of cheese and crackers and he would went on the ship he was so excited to move to the united states that um in the united states you know he would have a brand new life and so what started to happen is that first day he goes to his ship uh, on the side of the ship and he eats his cheese and crackers the second day he eats cheese and crackers the third day he eats cheese and crackers and he sees everybody going to their places and eating and all of stuff you know in their fancy restaurants and something happens toward the end of his voyage one guy comes to him and says hey um i've noticed you are not eating with us you you keep hiding on the side of the ship when we go eating in the restaurant what's what's going on with you why are you eat why you're not why are you not eating with us in the restaurant and the man felt very embarrassed and he said well the problem is i don't have enough money to pay for the restaurants i only have enough money to buy the ticket so i'm eating my cheese and crackers on the side and I'm so happy to get to America and the guy looked at him he said what do you mean you got a ticket right yeah I got a ticket he said did you know that all of the meals on all of the restaurants were included in your ticket so this guy is eating cheese and crackers while all the meals and all the restaurants are included in his ticket my friend God didn't just create it for you to just make it to heaven. Jesus prayed the Father so that you will have a same rich relationship with the Holy Spirit that Jesus had with his disciples. The disciples had with Jesus. Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. Holy Spirit wants to fellowship with you. Holy Spirit wants to walk with you. Holy Spirit wants to take every step with you. He loves you. He cares for you and you can know him the same way Jesus had a relationship with his disciples. So the, the first truth is Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. The second truth is Holy Spirit is the petition of Jesus. Truth number three, the Holy Spirit is the purpose of salvation. Now I understand the Holy Spirit is we get saved so we go to heaven we get saved so we get reconciled with the father we get saved so we have a new creation new nature that's all true my friend all of that is 100 percent true but something i want to share with you right now that some of you have never seen before and that is this book of acts chapter 2 verse 38 this is what it says then the peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all those who are far off and as many as the Lord God will call so the Holy Spirit comes upon disciples and then you know people just 
around are like, what's going on? Why are they speaking in tongues? Why there's wind? Why there's fire? Peter stops, tells them the gospel. And then this, this thing happens. Peter tells him, I want you guys to repent. And then I want you to also be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you would think, what's the catch? Also, you will go to heaven. Get baptized so that you are not going to go to hell. But you know what Peter says? So you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter is saying, I want you to get saved so you can get the Holy Ghost. See, a lot of us, we focus salvation on getting us into a place called heaven. But Peter wanted us to get saved so we can get a person called Holy Spirit. Please don't get me wrong. We need a place called heaven. We're going to a place like he called heaven if we're Christians. But Peter says that I want you to get saved so that you can get a person before you get a place. Many people don't believe in heaven. But when you meet the person of the Holy Spirit, He is the seal. He is God's stamp approval of your salvation. God is saying, before I get you to a place, I want to bring you a person, the Holy Spirit. What is salvation? Salvation is not just a goal. Salvation is a gate into a kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? It's not eating and drinking. It's righteousness, it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Meaning the Holy Spirit is the green pastures. The Holy Spirit is what salvation gives us open door into. The Holy Spirit is what opens door to a kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. Salvation is not so you escape hell. Salvation is not just only so you escape earth. Salvation is not just so that your name is written in the book of life. Salvation is not just so that your sins are forgiven. Salvation is so that you will receive God's most precious gift after the gift of eternal life that you will receive the eternal Spirit of God who will live inside of you. It's having God within you, not just God the Father in heaven, not just God the Son who is at the right hand of the Father interceding for you, but God the Spirit who lives inside of you right now and never leaves you and never abandons you. Holy Spirit is the purpose of salvation. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the petition of the Son. And the Holy Spirit is the purpose of why God the Father saved you. Not only He's taken me to a place, but He made me a place for His Spirit. Not only God is preparing me a, a, a mansion, He made me a real estate for the Holy Spirit. He made me a place of dwelling for the Holy Spirit. Come on, man, this is so wonderful. Can we just take a moment and just say, Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for salvation. Jesus, I thank you that you made available to us in this century what disciples had during that time. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Come on, let's just take a second. Drop that fire emoji. I see that the, the footage is getting a little bit more blurry, but just drop that fire emoji on right now on the YouTube and just go ahead and just, just, just take a moment right now. Drop that fire emoji. Just say, Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for your fire. I thank you for your glory. Come on, drop that fire emoji. Spam the chat right now. Come on. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. We adore you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. So as you guys are seeing, <coughs> I am battling a little bit of running nose and uh but i still i really did not want to stop the stream today i wanted to come off and minister and pray and i believe as i'm going to be ministering to you guys the holy spirit is going to be also ministering to me as well and so i am not a sick person but i'm a healthy person fighting sickness and so that's why my voice sounds a little bit different it's not more anointing it's just um it's just i'm coming off of something amen 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 
praise God so now we're going to take a moment and we're going to talk about the speaking in tongues and so let's begin to just take a moment and we're going to speak uh just just touch the issue of give me one second I'm going to obey my friend Everett right here who told me to get off of the get off of the wi-fi on one phone and so um, I want to take a moment right now and talk about the issue of speaking in tongues we're going to go into that topic of speaking in tongues before we talk about the speaking in tongues I want to share the difference between the indwelling and the infilling of the Holy Spirit the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you the infilling of the Holy Spirit happens when the Holy Spirit overflows and fills you so let me just give you the difference and our moderators will drop that in the comment below the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is happens one time the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a repeated experience indwelling of the Holy Spirit follows your salvation infilling of the Holy Spirit follows your surrender indwelling of the Holy Spirit is about possession Holy Spirit possessing you infilling of the Holy Spirit is about power about Holy Spirit empowering you so pretty much the big difference is this is the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you when you get saved but he comes to fill you during your surrender and during that time you'd experience power you'd experience his gifts you begin to speak in other languages you begin to speak in tongues and you begin to evangelize with power your life begins to have a resemblance with power of God in the name of Jesus Christ and so if we see in Ephesians 1 13 it says in him you also trust that after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in him also having believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of purchased possession to the praise of his glory so that speaks of holy spirit indwelling you holy spirit dwelling inside of you in first corinthians 6 19 20 it says do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from God you are not your own you were bought with the price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's meaning you become a possession when the spirit of God indwells you come on if you don't dwell with the Holy Ghost spam the chat right now with number one and so Acts chapter 2 verse 4 it says everybody was present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them this ability so I want you to notice this in John it says that Jesus breathed on his disciples and they received the Holy Spirit but in Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the Holy Spirit so I believe they were indwelled with the Holy Spirit when he breathed on them but then they were infilled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost now filling of the Holy Spirit is a reoccurring event indwelling of the Holy Spirit happens one time filling of the Holy Spirit is commanded meaning we are told to be filled with the Holy Spirit and dwelling of the Holy Spirit is a gift that comes at your salvation so these are two different experiences one of the people that asked me the question say Vlad is being baptized with the Holy Spirit the same thing as being saved it's different experience when you are saved you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit but when you are filled with the Holy Spirit it's a reoccurring event it's a reoccurring occurrence that begins to take place with your life and why are we told to be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit well my friend because we leak we go through stuff and we leak we sometimes leak and we need to be constantly filled with the Holy Ghost now I want to take a moment right now and talk to us about speaking in tongues and I'm just going to give you very quickly five reasons or five purposes why God wants to baptize you and why God wants you to speak in tongues the first reason is when you speak in tongues you are speaking to God not to men in first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 it says for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries so when you speak in tongues you are not speaking to men you are speaking to God all right it's a little secret dialogue it's an intimate and direct communication with God it's a secret code you have with God the devil cannot understand it your mind cannot understand it 
Your haters cannot understand it. Believers cannot understand it. Your spirit sometimes will understand what's happening, but it is in direct, intimate communication with God. Come on, if, if you, if God gave you that prayer language already and you speak in tongues, drop that in the comment below. Let me know if you are a tongue speaking spirit filled believer drop that in, in the comment right now because i believe that those of you who don't have it we're gonna pray and god's gonna baptize you with the holy ghost and fire and you will receive your prayer language today the second reason for speaking in tongues the second benefit of speaking in tongues is with tongues we are declaring god's wonders in unlearned languages in acts chapter 2 verse 11 it says the cretans and arabs we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So not only you are speaking to God, not to men, but guess what you are speaking about? You are speaking God's wonderful works. When you are praying in tongues, you are speaking God's wonderful works. You are speaking to God about His glory. You are speaking to God about His wonders. You are speaking to God about the things that are awesome. And sometimes, you know, we're so limited with our English, with our Spanish and with our Russian. But when you begin to speak in tongues, it might seem like it's the same tongues. But my friend, it's different every time because God adds different meaning to it. You're speaking to God wonders. My God, man, I want to speak in tongues right now. Number three, with tongues, we praise God. Acts chapter 10 verse 46 for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. When you speak in tongues, you magnify God. The scripture says also in 1 Corinthians 16, 14, 16 and 17, Apostle Paul says, otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, he's talking about speaking in tongues. How will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks? So you can give thanks with the Spirit. You can give thanks with tongues. Since he does not understand what you say. For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. So you can praise God with tongues. You can also give thanks with tongues. When you pray in tongues, you are giving God the glory. The Spirit of God is glorifying the Father through you and that is so precious and that is so amazing number four with tongues we edify ourselves first corinthians chapter 14 4 he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church he who speaks with tongues builds himself up the Bible says also in Jude is to pray in the Spirit so that you can build your most holy faith. You can pray in the Spirit to build yourself up. So many people are not encouraged. They find, they want to motivate themselves. They want to build themselves up. You know, it's good when you go to the gym and you lift weights. That's awesome. It's good if you are, you know, uh, speaking positive things to yourself. That's awesome. You know, affirmation, speaking scriptures and everything. But there's one way where you can lift yourself up every day. Is open up your mouth and speak in tongues. Now, have you noticed that Apostle Paul says, he who speaks in the tongue, a lot of people, think that speaking in tongues is something the Holy Spirit does for you. Not realizing it's something He does through you. Come on, that's a revelation right there for somebody. Listen to this. Speaking in tongues is not just something the Holy Spirit does for you. It's something He does through you. Paul says, he who speaks in a tongue, meaning you can do it at will. Paul says, I speak more in tongues than anybody else. <laughs> you can do it at will. And today I believe God's going to baptize you. But you're still going to have to open up your mouth. In just a moment, I'm going to teach you how to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit of speaking in tongues. And I believe God's going to use this stream. And some of you are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you're going to speak in tongues for the first time in your life.
it's going to be incredible the power of god's going to fall so those of you who are on instagram and facebook and TikTok, begin to make your way to insta to our youtube because when we're going to start praying for the baptism of the holy spirit i'm going to disconnect from the rest of the platforms and only be praying for uh, people that are on youtube <laughs> number five with tongues we are praying according to god's will Romans chapter 8 verse 26 and verse 27. Likewise the Spirit also helps us with our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray as we ought but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us when we pray in tongues. Now he doesn't only intercede for us when we are praying in tongues, he also intercedes for us when we are also praying in English, he directs our intercession. And so the five reasons why you should be praying in tongues is number one, when you speak in tongues, you're speaking to God, not to men. Number two, when you are speaking in tongues, you're declaring God's wonders. Number three, when you're speaking in tongues, you're praising God. Number four is when you are speaking in tongues, you're building yourself up. And number five, when you're speaking in tongues, you are praying according to God's will. Come on, somebody, to give God some praise right now. So now I'm going to share with you just six practical things on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to receive the gift of tongues. Come on, if you're ready for this, I know some of you have that, but you're going to need to take notes because you, you might teach this to somebody else who needs to learn this. And so uh, to the rest of you who are just tuning in and you're like, what is this? We are talking about the prayer language, what the Bible talks about speaking in tongues. And today we're going to be praying for that. It's the Pentecost Sunday this weekend. What a greatest gift that you can receive as a Christian is the empowerment and infilling of the Holy Spirit with a speaking in tongues. And God wants to give you that today. And so as I mentioned, I'm going to share with you on how to receive this gift. And then I'm going to disconnect the rest of the social media platforms and we will only be streaming to YouTube where we're going to be praying for healing and also praying for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Man, I'm so excited. Whew. Number one, how to receive the gift of speaking in tongues. Number one, you have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Before you can be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. In other words, you need to be baptized into Jesus first, meaning you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. John 7 38 it says those who believe in me Jesus says then we come to Jesus and out of their belly will flow the rivers of living water so you have to first believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you place your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior the Holy Spirit already lives inside of you come on if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior can you spam the chat uh, the chat right now just spam the chat and drop that one if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, spam the chat. Let me know if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't, all you got to do is repent of your sin. Place your trust in Jesus Christ right now and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Your life will change. Not because you're going to try harder. Not because you're going to try more. But because the Spirit of God is going to come inside of you and He will live inside of you. Come on. We just broke 800 people on YouTube. This is incredible. This is the, the most that we've ever seen on YouTube. But I believe we're going to break a thousand today for the glory of God. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, spam the chat, drop number one. So that's number one step. To receive this, this gift is you have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number two. <laughs> this is very deep, okay? <laughs> the second one is very deep. Relax. Yes, you heard me right. The second way, the second step to receive the prayer language is you have to relax. The scripture says in Acts chapter 2 verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Not standing, not kneeling, but sitting. Sitting position. I'm going to show it to you. It's a relaxed position. Now I understand I'm a little bit further from the camera. I'm going to come back to the camera right now. But it's it's a relaxed position. Now most of us when we're thinking 
of the day of Pentecost, we're thinking of <sighs> intense, like this, like birthing something. And some, I see sometimes people praying for the uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they're praying for the filling of the Holy Spirit, and you see this, like they're about to give birth to something like this, like true veil, this like, oh, very intense. Please, please relax. Striving doesn't get you the prayer language. Surrender does. Surrender. Come on, somebody spam the chat right now. Surrender, not striving. Surrender, not striving. So you have to surrender. You have to stop striving. Stop. Just, just relax. Just relax. Step number three. Your choice is involved. So you have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, number one. Number two is you have to relax. And number three is your choice is involved. What do you mean your choice is involved, lad? Acts 2.2. 2. Let's read this verse again. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house. And if you read the verse 4, it says, And they spoke with tongues as the spirit gave them utterance they did the speaking but spirit gave them utterance your choice is involved you have to understand is this gift must be received the holy spirit will fill you but you will do the speaking the holy spirit will not speak for you he will speak through you but in the same way you have to yield your tongue you have to yield your vocals you have to yield yourself to the holy spirit the baptism of the holy spirit does not come from heaven it comes from your spirit from your belly the bible says so the the rivers will come from here from your inner man not from the above so that means everything you need to speak in tongues is in your belly right now. Spirit will give you utterance. You have to open your mouth and speak. Your choice will be involved. He will not speak for you. He will speak through you. Come on, somebody, drop that in the chat right now. He will not speak for you. Somebody needs to hear this. He will speak through you. The prayer language does not come from heaven. It comes from your spirit. It comes from the belly. The Bible says from your belly will flow rivers of living water. It does not say from the throne of heaven. It says from your belly. Meaning from your inner man. From the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. So number three, your choice is involved. Number four, your faith is needed. Every gift from God is received by faith. This gift is received the same way. Let me say again. The first way to receive the spirit, to receive the gift of tongues, is receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The second way is relax. Number three is your choice is involved; it needs to be involved. Number four, your faith will be involved. Just like any gift of God, it will be received by faith. God says in Psalm eighty-one, verse ten, "Open your mouth, and I will fill it." God says, as you release sounds believe the holy spirit is adding meaning to them do you know that it requires faith to speak in tongues now some people they receive salvation by faith they receive that the holy spirit lives in them by faith we receive healing by faith when it comes to the prayer language faith is required faith in what faith in releasing the sound when the Spirit of God fills you and trusting that the Spirit of God is adding meaning to that sound as you speak it, that requires faith. It takes faith to speak in tongues. See, some of us think, no, something just comes on you. My friend, that's witchcraft. The Holy Spirit doesn't control us 
The Holy Spirit leads us and fills us. He doesn't control us. He's not going to come on you and take control of you. He will fill you and you will have to speak by faith, trusting He's adding meaning to syllables and sounds that are coming out of your mouth. My friend, a lot of people have faith for their salvation. Faith that the Holy Spirit lives in them. But it takes faith to release the living water. See, you received the Holy Spirit by faith when you got saved. Now you have to release the Holy Spirit through your mouth by faith as well. Now, will you feel the bubbly feelings? Yeah. Will you feel an overwhelming presence of God most of the time? But it's by faith. I don't speak in tongues because something came on me. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. And then I open up my mouth. The same thing you open the faucet. The water is already in the pipe. You just got to open the faucet and the water comes out. Now, if you don't open the faucet, if you don't uh, turn on the, the faucet, if you don't open the faucet and turn it on, the water will never come out. Even if the water is connected to your house, the pressure is there. But nothing is coming out. Why? Because you're not turning on the faucet. When you open your mouth, God will fill it. You say, Vlad, so do I just make up syllables? No, you release the sound from your belly, from your spirit. But which sound? Your spirit, let it release that. Not your mind. Your understanding will be unfruitful. But your spirit, it will make the sound that will sound foolish to your mind at first. But remember, it's a spiritual thing. It's not a mental or a physical thing. And number five, and this is huge, remove fear that you will speak your own or, or demonic words when you start praying in tongues. My God, th this is going to set somebody free right now. <laughs> We're almost breaking 900 on YouTube right now. Guys, those of you on Instagram, I'm going to be leaving Instagram in just a few, few more minutes. And those of you on TikTok and on Facebook, Go ahead and jump on YouTube. We're going to be praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to be closing uh, these platforms in about five minutes or so. So jump on YouTube. We just broke 900 people on YouTube. And I'm believing for a thousand today. And I'm believing for hundreds to be baptized in the Holy Spirit within filling and speaking tongues. So number five, remove fear, which is not biblical fear. That if you speak in tongues, they are your own words or they are demonic words. Luke chapter 11, verse 13, he says, If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. So Jesus is saying, don't be afraid. If you ask for the Holy Spirit, the Father will not give you a snake. He's not going to give you something else. It's not just going to be your own language. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. So remove that fear. Some of you, this is what holds you back. Some of you, you stopped speaking in tongues because after you spoke in tongues, this voice told you. You made that up. That was you speaking. That wasn't God. Well, yeah, of course it was you speaking. I mean, what else? This wasn't, it was your mouth. It was your pipes that was producing that sound, but it was originated from the Father, from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the last one, number six. Don't give to the voice of the accusers and scoffers. So number six, the moment you start speaking in tongues, there will be people or others who will be making fun of you. As it happened with the disciples they start saying they were drunk they were crazy acts chapter 2 verse 12 they were all amazed and perplexed saying to one another whatever this could mean others mocking saying they're full of new wine when you start speaking in tongues sometimes your own voice will tell you you're making that up but then there will be demons that will try to discredit your experience 
And sometimes they can come in the form of critics who will say all of this is fake, all of this is demonic, and they will mock the experience of speaking in tongues. So guess what you have to do? Ignore them. Ignore them. So let me share with you my experience of speaking in tongues. I grew up in the Pentecostal family. So we went to a church where everyone spoke in tongues, at, you know, that I could remember. My family, my mom and my dad, you know, they spoke in tongues. And then at the young age, my uncle started the church and he uh, decided at the age of 13, when I was 13, that one of the things that we have to do is pray that all the teenagers, they speak in tongues. And so what started to happen is um, they gathered together and all of my cousins come together. You know, I was like 13 and a half, 14 years of age. And um, everybody started to speak in tongues, almost everybody except me. Now, mind you, I was a little bit self-righteous, okay? I kind of thought I deserved the speaking in tongues more than anybody else, all right? And um, and that's one of the reasons I think God didn't give me the gift of prayer language at the time. So they all spoke in tongues. I didn't. I was really offended, actually. So I started to fast every Wednesday. And I said, God, I need this gift. I need this gift. I need this gift. Why are you not giving it to me? For about six months, I fasted and prayed. And... I would feel the presence of the Holy Ghost touching me so powerfully. But I was so afraid to risk it and to let that out. Because I was like, no way, nothing is going to come out of my mouth. That's not of God. God has to like take control of my mouth and speak through my mouth. But God doesn't manipulate us. He yields, excuse me, He, he respects our will and our choice. I remember it was one Saturday, two afternoon. I'm praying on the balcony of my father's and my mom's duplex second story two afternoon and I'm praying and I was like you know father God and I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost and then one syllable came out okay one syllable something that wasn't English and it wasn't Russian it was so beautiful I felt so good I said it again and again and again and then I start tripping over my words and it's just like it started gushing out of my mouth it felt so good and I just kept on praying I felt like man I think I got tongues so I called my uncle my pastor and I said uncle I think I got tongues and he's like don't be afraid keep on praying and he says the enemy is gonna lie to you and says you made that up and he said when he comes and says that he says ignore him and he was so right because the moment I went back to pray I felt exactly that that the enemy told me that um you made that up and honestly, by the grace of God, I kept on praying and praying. And from now on, I've been, you know, praying in tongues all the time. I pray in tongues every single day. I pray in tongues. I speak in tongues. I sing in tongues. And sometimes I have a, like a knowing of what I'm praying about. And sometimes it's just the sweet, precious presence of the Holy Ghost. And, um, and that's, that's what that is. So we're about to start praying for those of you who are watching us right now so um uh, youtube family just go ahead and like this video right now spam the fire emoji come on spam the fire emoji right now because this is about to take place for those of you on facebook go ahead and jump right now on youtube because i'm gonna uh, close the live stream and we're gonna do the prayer for the filling of the holy ghost on youtube and for healing and so go ahead and jump jump that on youtube our moderators are gonna drop also on our timeline right now this stream from youtube and so i will see you in just a moment on youtube god bless you and then as well as all of my wonderful tiktok family i'm gonna see you on youtube in just a moment god bless you and my wonderful uh precious instagram family go ahead and jump right now on youtube we're about to start praying for the holy spirit's baptism and so go ahead i want to see you. the channel name is vladimir subchuk uh, Vladimir subject pastor Vlad just search one of them and you're gonna find me right there I'm gonna wait for you for about a few seconds come on somebody <laughs> and we have a thousand people watching I see a lot of you dropping fire emoji come on somebody we're about to stop praying for the infilling of the Holy Ghost amen 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 I had a dream that we're gonna reach a thousand people today last yesterday was about uh, come on. I see a lot of you guys are excited that we've reached a thousand people. Come on. 
<laughs> I see some of you are more excited than I am. And, and the crazy part is it's while I'm like fighting through sickness and what a what a crazy, crazy Thursday that we have had so far in Jesus mighty name. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 I'm going to be praying for you guys in a little bit and then you're going to be praying for me as well because I need that prayer today as well in Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We praise you, God. Come on, let's just take a moment right now. We're just going to welcome the precious Holy Spirit. I'm going to just uh, play this song in the background. It's one of my favorite songs by our worship team. It's called uh, Consume Me With Your Fire. Uh, it's a Holy Spirit. I call it the Holy Spirit song. And so I'm just going to play it on the background uh, slightly. And so you don't need to have a song. I just like the Holy Spirit songs. And so um, let me just lower the volume. Just whatever you are right now, stretch your hands or just, just get in the receiving position. If you're driving, please keep, don't like either pull over or uh, don't don't stretch your hands and, and let go of the steering wheel unless you're driving Tesla. And so, but the rest of you, I want you to just honestly get in the receiving position from the Holy Spirit. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the moment to welcome Him. Let's ask Jesus to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Say this with me. Say, Oh Jesus. Come on, say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Right now, I receive you into my heart fill me with your Holy Spirit father in the name of Jesus every person that is watching me on YouTube right now fill them with the Holy Spirit from the top of their head to the soles of their feet Jesus you promised the coming of your spirit you said if we believe in you and if we are thirsty we can drink from you fill that one with your Holy Spirit right now fill them with the Holy Spirit as they're gonna open their mouth as we're gonna yield to you right now let your fire fall afresh. There is no distance for deliverance and there is no distance for baptism of your Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, you are omnipresent. Let your river flow right now. Let your river flow right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit right now that's filling this room, that's filling the studio, that's filling people right now. That's it. Those of you who are there right now, just open up your mouth and just begin to praise Him right now. Open up your mouth and just begin to pray. Begin to pray. Whatever syllables that come out of here, not here, but out of your spirit, it could be one sound, it could be two sounds, it could be three sounds, whatever it is. Just begin to release it right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, those of you, just begin to pray. For those of you in the chat, you don't have to type out the tongues. I begin to just drop that fire emoji. If, just pray. If you're praying in the Holy Ghost, just right now, drop that fire emoji. I will know that you're praying with me in the Holy Ghost. As we are praying in the Holy Ghost right now, those of you who are, who are desiring the prayer language, all you got to do is the Spirit of God is filling you right now. He's filling through this stream. All you got to do is open up your mouth. Fire. Lord, let your fire descend right now. Let your fire come 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 right now. The 
That's it. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Spirit that's filling your heart right now. You got to open up your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. And begin to pray in the language that you don't know. Just trust the Spirit of God is adding meaning to that right now. That's the way it is. That's, that's just the way it is. The Holy Spirit just fills you. And then you open your mouth and it just comes out. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Fire of God. Fire of God. Begin to be filled with the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. Soto be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled with the Holy Come on, just begin to focus on the Lord. Don't even focus on the stream. Focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Don't be afraid. Jesus is filling you right now. Jesus is filling you right now. All you got to do, open your mouth and God will fill it. The syllables that will come out, it's going to be from Him. And just let it, let it flow and just continue to glorify His name. Continue to glorify His name. You will experience a, your own Pentecost right now. The wind of the Holy Ghost is coming. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fall afresh right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Fill your people right now, Spirit of God. Fill your people right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing that's falling right now in the name of Jesus. My God, thank you, Lord. For those of you who this is the first time that you spoke in tongues to them today, or it's happening right now, and you're like, hey, I'm speaking in the language I've never spoken before. And it's the Holy Spirit touching me right now. Come on, spam the chat right now. Let me know if this is the first time that you've spoken tongues. Let me know. I believe that some of you, this is the first time that you've never spoken tongues before and the Holy Spirit filled you up. So if that happened to you right now, let me know in the comments below. want to see you. We want to see you for those. I see the fire all over Vlad. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. I need more of that. I feel the fire of God. I'm speaking in tongues for the first time. Sarah said that, come on. Haley is saying, whoa, I spoke in tongues. Why do I feel empty? Don't focus on your feelings. Focus on the Lord. Focus on the Holy Spirit. Discerning that more. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. If you spoke in tongues for the first time, go, go ahead and just drop that in the comment. Drop that in the comment. I couldn't speak in tongues. Yes, you could. Just release it. Do you think God can change people's hearts without them asking? I can't get it. If you have Rebecca, if you have somebody next to you in the house, they can pray with you right now. I see somebody else saying, I spoke in tongues for the first time. I spoke, come down, call down the fire of God. Or call, call, come down, call the fire of God. I spoke, Corina saying, I spoke in tongues for the first time. Come on, praise God, praise God. I see other people that are saying that right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are feeling right now, that you are feeling. I was scared and I said something. Don't be scared. Remember what I told you. Don't be scared. Focus on Jesus. For the first time I spoke in tongues. Joyce, Joyce, keep on speaking. 
Keep on praying in tongues. Keep on praying in tongues. I said that. I never spoke. Come on. Keep on praying in the Holy Ghost. For those of you who spoke in tongues for the first time, keep on praying in the Holy Spirit. Tonight, tomorrow. For those of you maybe like, hey, I can't. You need to go back and rewatch this video. And listen, don't give up. It took me six months. It wasn't because God wasn't ready to baptize me. I was a little bit too stubborn. But the Lord used that to draw me closer to Him. Continue to pray 15, 20 minutes every day. Just pray in tongues and don't give up. Just, just, just let that and then you will see different, different words, different even sounds will begin to come out. And that's, that's going to be the Holy Spirit that will be filling, filling you. Let me know, for those of you that are here right now, we're going to drop hungrygen.com slash testimony. If it's been a long time, you've been waiting for this and you were never able to get it and today was the first time that this happened and you're like, man, this is amazing. I've been waiting for this. Go ahead and drop us a testimony. Past uh, hungrygen.com slash testimony. Hungrygen.com slash testimony. So that we can share it with our team and so that we can rejoice with you as well. Especially this Sunday, we're going to be praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and I would love to use your testimony to encourage people as well. So if you today for the first time that this happened to you, drop us a testimony. We would love to celebrate with you. I know there's more testimonies that are coming on board right now. But as we are doing that, can I take a moment right now and pray for those people who are sick? Now, I understand some are like, Vlad, you're the one that needs prayer for healing. Yes. So we're going to do today two kinds of prayers. One is I'm going to ask you to pray for me. Okay. It's been about a week and a half that I've been battling with this thing. It comes in and come and, and leaves. And so I'm rebuking it, praying against it. But at, at the same time, I'm going to trust you that you're going to pray for me right now. That whatever this is, the, the flu, this is not a flu, so I don't have it. Um, I had it, but I recovered from that. But it's just the residue of that. And so um, go ahead and pray for me right now. That God will take care of that. And I'm going to pray for those people that are sick right now. If you're believing for a healing, I want you to spam the chat right now. Whatever you're believing for healing for, go ahead and drop that in the chat. If you're believing for healing right now, for somebody in your family, or for yourself go ahead and drop that in the comment right now what you need to be prayed for for healing go ahead and drop that in the comment i'm gonna be praying right now for for the healings where's my um okay so my screen is right here father god in the name of jesus christ i stand in agreement right now and the rest of you who are who are not sick Pray with me and pray for me. And let's pray for these believers that are believing for healing right now. Let's believe for healings to break out today in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Let's let's agree right now. Come on. Keep on spamming the chat right now. Keep on spamming the chat. I see that I see the prayer requests coming in. I see the prayer requests are coming in right now. So keep on spamming the chat. And I see them. I'm going to be praying through them right now together with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against every glaucoma. I come against every piles. I come against every numbness in the body, every chest pain, everything that's swollen in the body in the name of Jesus Christ, every burning sensation in the body and body pain. In Jesus' name, be gone right now. Every dry cough in Jesus' name. I come against every lost smell and loss of taste due to COVID. I rebuke that COVID right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, every flu, I rebuke that flu right now in Jesus' name. Every constant running nose, be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every gastritis, every allergic reaction to particular foods. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing to every acid reflex in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every insomnia right now. Every sleeping disorder, sleeping paralysis, sleep apnea. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on somebody, help me pray right now. Help me pray. When I repeat a sickness right now, when I mention a healing for a sickness, just spam the chat. Drop that fire emoji. Drop that I receive prayer. Let's stand in agreement for the brothers and sisters right now and stand in agreement with me as well. I need your prayers right now as well as I'm praying for others. God is healing through His name and through His promise. Not through us, but through His name and through His promise. And He's going to be healing right now, people, in Jesus' name. I speak healing to people with chronic migraine headaches. Be healed in Jesus' name. People who have difficulty in walking, 
difficulty in standing, difficulty in sitting, be healed in Jesus' name, difficulty in urinating, be healed in Jesus' name, a bleeding problem with your menstrual cycle, it doesn't, the bleeding doesn't stop, I rebuke that right now, be healed in Jesus' mighty name, I rebuke every cancer right now, cancer in the bone, cancer in the brain, cancer in the breast, cancer, cervical cancer, lung cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, skin cancer, stomach cancer, blood cancer, every leukemia, lymphoma in Jesus mighty name, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against that cancer right now in Jesus mighty name. I rebuke that cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against every HIV AIDS, every sexual transmitted disease, every incurable disease for which they said there is no healing. I rebuke that in Jesus mighty name. Every, every, I speak healing to the problems in the lungs. I rebuke the diabetes and high blood pressure right now in Jesus mighty name. High cholesterol. I speak healing right now to that problem in the blood. I speak healing to lupus right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to every MS, multiple sclero sclerosis in the name of Jesus. Thyroid cancer, thyroid gland problems, hormonal imbalance. Be healed in Jesus' name. Arthritis, be healed in the name of Jesus. Every kidney disease, be healed in Jesus' name. Come on, spam the chat. I receive. I rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke arthritis right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every heart disease, every heart burn, every blood clots in the heart in the name of Jesus, irregular heartbeat, enlarged heart, be healed in Jesus' name. I speak healing right now for liver tumor, for every tumor, for problems in the liver in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. I come against every asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. Every problem with breathing, be healed. I rebuke lower back pain, herniated discs, cervical problem, lumbar problems, pelvic problem, problems in the hips and every problem in the back, be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Skin disease eczema, every rash, ringworm, white spots, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now, in the name of Jesus, allergies, seasonal allergies, I speak healing right now, in the name of the Lord, I rebuke every eating disorder, I rebuke right now every anorexia, every bulimia, be healed in Jesus mighty name, I rebuke barrenness, low sperm count, infertility, fibroids in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Manifest your glory right now, Lord. Come on, place your hand upon the part of the body where you are believing for healing right now. And just begin to speak healing right now. Begin to speak, speak healing. Say, Lord, I speak life into that area right now. I speak life into that area right now. I speak life into that area right now in Jesus' mighty name. I speak life into that area right now. If you felt God's healing touch on your body, if you felt God's healing touch and you're able to do something you cannot do before and you're exercising your body, let us know in the comment below but the best would be if you send us an email excuse me send us this uh, hungrygen.com slash testimony i see already a few testimonies coming in from this stream concerning the uh, baptism in the holy ghost um i see the testimonies already coming in i spoke in tongues for the first time uh, thank you so much weepy willow uh, for your testimony sarah um, I prayed, I felt called, and I spoke in tongues that I've never spoke before. Thank you, Alessia. Um, I prayed, 
and I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I understood it for the first time. Thank you for your testimony. If you received prayer right now for healing and you're noticing something is happening, go ahead and anxiety. I see somebody saying anxiety is gone, fear is gone. Um, take a moment, you know, you can leave the YouTube just for a second and, and type a testimony, hungrygen.com slash testimony. We would love to celebrate with you and and to glorify God with you in Jesus mighty name. We appreciate a lot of you that are watching us right now and sending us your testimonies. Um, we just wanted to glorify God for that in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to just take a moment and I see a lot of testimonies coming in. Keep keep on dropping your testimonies, God. I feel heal, healed of a hip pain. I see people saying anxiety and fear is gone. Um, man, YouTube is just spamming with, with chats. This was the first time I had a different feeling. Um, pain in abdomen is gone. Come on, somebody. Deliverance from lust and fear. Anxiety and fear is leaving. Tennis healing. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. I feel the, the Lord is moving right now. He is healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much. I see a lot of you releasing prayers from me as well. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. And so, um, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm going to read some questions that we received on social media concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But before we do that, we want to take a moment right now, guys. Um, we've been here for already for an hour and a half. I want to take a moment <clears throat> and ask you to sow where you want to grow. I want to ask you uh, today to partner with me, with our ministry. As our ministry is growing, as some of you heard last week, is that we are bringing one more person on the staff to be able to help us with a lot of the written content. And so if the Lord puts upon your heart, we are still waiting for about two thirds of the partners. And I'm believing that today we're going to raise them. And so this will help to pay and sponsor a person full time to help us with written content, to take some of these videos that I produce Broke them, break them down into reading plans, break them down into blogs, and break them down into other content so that we can use Google $10,000 ads free of charge. But it takes, it takes a lot of work to get that done. And so I want to invite you right now to sow where you want to grow. I want to invite you to um, help me to fuel this mission. You know, for some of you, maybe it's just $20 or $10 a month. For next 12 months um thank you liana you just became a partner appreciate during this stream and jennifer thank you for your donation tiffany thank you for your donation carolina loba thank you for your uh, donation you can give through pastorvlad.org give that's where you can become a partner or you can give one time through venmo through zelle or through paypal or through cash app and if you are uh the crypto or maybe your crypto which crypto kind of went down last few days. But if your crypto went up and you really, really want to give through crypto, you can do that as well on our website. And so what we're doing, guys, is this, is that we're offering all of our stuff for free. Um, today, we released a new ebook, And uh, we take some people who help us edit it. I pay them. Um, and then graphics. We have a company that does our graphics. We have some people who do our videos. Um, we also pay uh, for that and we offer all of that for free. The Lord really put on my heart and he said um, that he will send partners and that they will help us to fuel this mission. And if God puts that on your heart and you say, man, I've been really, really blessed by the ministry of Pastor Vlad and I want to sow into that, especially if you want to be a partner, man, this would mean so much to us. So we're looking today for more partners so we can put the person on the staff to help us spread the gospel to written content. We already have a school, online school. We already have ebooks, books, um, courses, videos, and a lot of online content that we release regularly. And so this will help us. So go ahead. I know a lot of you guys are heading out right now. And so go ahead and sow where you want to grow, partner 
God's going to bless you. If you are a partner with this ministry, drop that one in the comment below right now. If you already are a partner, drop that one in the comment below. We really just want to honor you, just acknowledge you. And um, and if you are, you got your Dutch coin or any other coin and you want to tithe out of that, hey, um, we can drop you a link where you can do that. God bless you. Kimberly, good to see you here in the chat today. Um, Kimberly is a wonderful uh, partner of ours and who's coming to our internship. We're really excited. I think that's you, Kimberly. Um, that's that, Kimberly. Okay, thank you, guys. Monica, Michelle, Monique. Um, thank you. Wow, Rachel. So there's a lot of people that are already, you know, small amount, but it's going to make a big difference. Even if it's big amount, it's going to also make a big difference. So thank you, Jennifer, for your donation. Nathan, thank you for your donation. <laughs> appreciate you guys for those of you that are giving right now and uh, for those of you that are becoming partners um, so I'm gonna go ahead leave this giving link on right now first time on your program welcome Ilona thank you pastor for sharing today my pleasure watching from India how do you know if you're a Baptist in the Holy Spirit so I'm a part of the assemblies of God and so one of the ways is um, you will speak in tongues so we believe the evidence of the baptism of the spirit is speaking in tongues is being drunk in the spirit or slain in the holy spirit a real thing yes you can get filled with the holy spirit that you can actually um feel you know bible actually says when disciples were filled with the holy spirit they were called drunk now um that means they acted in some kind of a way that made the people around them think they're drunk so it's possible for that uh, to happen uh, where you can be. I've seen it where people honestly can get so overwhelmed. They call them drunk with a new wine. Um, but you're still not losing control when you're drunk with the Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit is not a drink. Holy Spirit is a person. So make sure that we always remember that. Um, <coughs> can you be baptized without knowing <coughs> of the Holy Spirit? Yes. If you look at Cornelius' house, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. Honestly, they did not know much about the Holy Spirit. Should Christians be regularly baptized? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Should Christians be regularly baptized with the Holy Spirit or is it a one-time thing? So Christians are regularly filled with the Holy Spirit, but um, baptized with the Holy Spirit, I believe it's it's a one-time thing, but being const we can be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do churches pray to receive the gift of tongues more than any other gifts? That's actually a very good question. And I'm with you on that. I really think that we have to um, focus not just on speaking in tongues. We have to focus on other gifts of the Holy Spirit like uh, prophecy. And so next week, we're going to have a special stream called Exposing New Age. A week after that, we're going to have a special stream called Prophecy Explained. And we're going to be actually something I've never done before. We're going to be bringing you guys on the stream. But it's going to only work on YouTube um, and give prophetic words on the stream. So it's going to be incredible. I'm really, really excited for that stream. So that's going to be in two weeks from now. And so, yes, uh, tongues is important, but there's other gifts as well. Why the churches are tongues are a gift and gifts are irrevocable. How can you surely know of continuous baptism of the Holy Spirit? Honestly, so this is where you have to keep on walking in the Holy Spirit. You have to keep on developing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, not just the tongues and pray in tongues if you want to keep on growing in God. Because otherwise, if you're just going to be just speaking in tongues, but you're not developing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, honestly, you're missing the whole point. Because God wants to not just develop your gifts, He wants to develop your fruit. What are some signs that you would baptize in the Holy Spirit? I already mentioned that. Um, you know, it's going to be tongues, it's going to be power, and it's going to be desire to evangelize. How do you always remain filled with the Holy Spirit? It's honestly being filled... It's being, it's filling yourself with God's word. It's filling yourself with prayer, fellowship with other believers, believers, evangelizing, and also praying. Okay, this is becoming a little bit embarrassing. And also praying in the Holy Spirit in tongues. 
Does baptism of the Holy Spirit come first before water baptism? Sometimes it depends. For some people, they get baptized in the Holy Spirit before water baptism. Like with me, it happened. I got baptized in water and then I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Is uh, baptism necessary to go to heaven? No, you don't need to speak in tongues to go to heaven and you don't need to get water baptized to go to heaven. Um, the, chi the criminal on the cross uh, didn't get baptized. But if you get a chance to get water baptized, you should take it and you should be filled with the Holy Spirit because God wants you to be filled with his spirit and so i want to take some moment and answer maybe any questions that we have on our stream as well is there a venmo link for partner preacher's daughter the same venmo link that you're seeing you can use for partnership as well but it's better if you do it through the website so then you can get your um uh, you can get like at the end of the year tax deduction and all of this stuff because on venmo cash app it's harder for us to do that because it's not connected to the main database um I hope you get well soon, Pastor. Yes, I hope so too. Um, Kimberly, thank you for your donation. Wendy, thank you for your donation. Woodline, thank you for your donation. Rose, thank you for your donation. David, thank you for your donation. Vera, thank you for your donation. Nad Nadine, thank you for your donation. And Shana, thank you for your partnership. Gloria, thank you for your partnership. We are getting closer and closer to reaching that um, amount that we are waiting for i believe that this stream um and this week we're going to reach that for the glory of god and um and we are going to uh, be able next month to start releasing that content where are you located his word is asking that question we are located in pasco washington washington state pasco so this weekend i'm going to be preaching at the church um on seven signs of an orphan heart or orphan spirit i'm really excited for that and uh you wanna you don't want to miss it we're going to be praying for the baptism of the holy spirit it's also our family service so all of the kids will be sitting together unless it's nursery so i want to welcome you to hungry gen i want to welcome you to our uh, services and i think it's going to be an awesome awesome experience if you come how many times can you be water baptized awesome question i think you should be getting water baptized one time and even if you get backslidden and you come back to, to church you should not get water baptized again unless you really really feel like you need to um when are you coming to texas i don't have any plans tyrod feels much better come on somebody amen praise god praise god i wish i lived in washington washington is an amazing place especially where we live not all washington is amazing though uh, Tiffany, thank you for your donation. Wow. Thank you, Tiffany, for your generous donation. That's very kind of you. Uh, Dominic, I am not going to try to butcher your name, so I apologize. Dominic, you. Um, thank you for your donation. Diana, thank you for your donation as well. Really appreciate that. When is your next deliverance program? Thank you for asking that question. Our next deliverance service is going to be the last Sunday of this month on the second service so last sunday of this month second service um hungrygen.com slash prayer line is where you can sign up we would love to have you i sowed into your ministry i have received freedom from mental torment come on nick thank you i celebrate with you what the lord is doing can't wait for next thursday next thursday guys is going to be fire we're going to deal it we're going to deal with exposing the new age and so as you guys have seen the video that I think got over 110,000 views right now on my YouTube about New Age, it's the demonic teaching and things that are happening. And we're going to be hitting the devil right where it hurts. And we're going to be dealing with the topic of New Age. We're going to have some testimony of previous New Agers. And I am really, really excited for next week. So do not miss next week. Tell all of your friends, all of your New Agers, especially if you have your New Ager friends, <laughs> They need to be watching. You need to be sharing that next week because this is going to be, it's going to be fire. I'm really, really excited what the Lord is going to do um, for um, our next week's stream. When are you going to preach on autism? I don't have a preaching on that. And so, um, so I don't have a preaching on that, but I do have an issue uh, on the topic of mental disorders, a teaching on my school. I want to give, but I don't have a PayPal. Um, daughter of Most High God, uh, we have different ways that you can give, but God bless you. Um, do you personally read the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures? 
Kanili I read New King James. I was ex New Ager. I won't miss it. No, you don't want to miss next week. Next week is going to be knockout. Fire. Do we need to be baptized by water before we start ministry? Uh, preferably, yes. Um, Monica, thank you for becoming a partner. Sarah, thank you for becoming a partner. Guys, God bless you. I think I'm going to go right now. And so thank you so much. I had a, such a wonderful time. Tonight, we did it. We broke a thousand views. This was crazy. I mean, honestly, like I saw a vision in the beginning of the year where we will see a thousand people watching at the same time. You know, this is our 10th stream, 10th week of streaming. I am shocked. Last week was 700 something people and today was 1,100 1, people watching. Man, this is incredible. And so we just want to say a huge thank you guys. We really, really uh, love each and every one of you, praying for you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your donations. Um, so I'm going to leave the donation link on for just a little bit. And then as we're going to head out, um, you can still hang out for a little bit on the chat. And um, may God bless you. We're going to still leave this.